Okay, in this video, uh, we're going to do uh, an actual very small uh, game creation with Lancaster. So a lot of the other Lancaster videos are either about the concepts behind Lancaster or it looks at uh, actually the code and how it works. Uh, this one's going to actually be a run through start to finish, creating a very, very simple game. Uh, so before you start this video, though, you should have Lancaster working on your computer. Um, if you haven't yet, uh, from GitHub, dbakewell uh, slash land-caster, uh, you can get um, the code. You can either clone that code with Git or you can download the zip file. However you get that uh, from GitHub, what it should look like is you should have a folder like this and you should be able to, use, for instance, double-click the run demo and that should start up. Uh, if you need any help with that, uh, if you go back to GitHub and below the download, there is a set up and run link. And if you go there, it'll tell you how to actually set up uh, everything you need to get that demo running. So once that demo is running, you're ready to start this video. Uh, now there's another video called How to Make a Game in Lancaster, and it kind of talks more conceptually about all these things. Well, we're going to run through all of those things uh, very quickly. Um, so the first step is here is just what is our concept and design? And we're trying to make a little Hello World game. So it's going to be a very simple design. Uh, we want to have a map. And that map's just going to start with a single player on it. Uh, maybe that map might have uh, some water. Uh, maybe it's got uh, some, some dirt. And at some place on that map, it's going to have kind of a special square, a place where the player can go. And then what we want to have is that when the player goes there, um, so what that might look like, I'm not going to redraw the whole map, but you know, when the player gets to that little square, uh, there's a pop-up. And that pop-up is the player saying, hello world. So just very simple. So that's our game. Um, nothing else on the map is going to change. Uh, I just didn't fill it all in. So there's still going to be the water. If we had water, there's still going to be the path and so on and so forth. Uh, that's the entire concept of this. So before we actually jump in with all of that uh, creative side things, we actually want to create our basic structure and launcher for this. Uh, now we can do most of this just from uh, what we had at the very beginning. So for example, if you look at the uh, Lancaster directory, uh, and there's two ways to look at it, I'll show it to you both ways. Uh, in the root of it, there's that run demo.bat. I'm actually going to use that as a template to make a launcher for my hello. So I'm going to take that run demo.bat and I'm going to save as, so in the Lancaster directory, and I'm just going to call this run hello.bat. Uh, we are only going to have one client, so let's get rid of uh, the last two lines of this file now. Uh, and let's just set this up to be what we need. Uh, so the name of the player is fine, uh, the name of the server is fine, but we actually have to say what the game is going to be called. So let's call our game Hello World. And we're going to add that to the client as well. Hello world. Okay, so we have got our command set up. So we're going to run Python, the start server script, and the game we want to run is called Hello World. We're going to run the client. Uh, again, uh, the game is Hello World, and our player name is Java. Uh, my name's Doug, actually. Maybe I'll just change the player name to be Doug if I want to. So that's our startup script. It's saved as run demo.bat. And again, I have saved that in the folder uh, in the Lancaster base folder. So from here now, I should be able to double click this. Uh, that did not work. Let me see if I didn't save it. Aha, I've done the wrong thing. I edited my run demo instead of my run hello. So that's okay. We'll just fix that there. Save that, undo all the changes here and save that. Okay, so now I'm in the correct file. So run hello.bat, hello world. And now if I go try it out, the Lancaster directory, run hello, if I double click that, it's going to tell me the system cannot find the specified path, source hello world. Okay, so I might try to start my game. My game doesn't actually exist yet. 
uh, but the launcher is trying. So the way we add a game folder is we go under source and we do a new directory for our game. So a new folder, hello world. I'm gonna go into hello world and I'm gonna make several folders in here. So just for convenience, I'm gonna make a folder called docs. Um, not used by the game engine, but it's a good place if you wanna put some documentation. Tile sets. Tile sets are our description of our graphics. We also need an images folder because that is where the actual images go. The tile sets are JSON files that describe the images. Uh, we're gonna do a new folder for maps. And we have our maps folder. Uh, now, as far as what this file structure is, if we go back to GitHub, if we go under create a game, you will actually see a file organization showing you uh, this basic structure. So I created a game called Hello World. The example here is Elmo. Um, I didn't bother with the fonts directory, uh, but images, maps, tile sets, those are your basic um, uh, folders. And then inside maps for each map, you also need a directory. So I will do that layer as well. So in the maps folder, I'm gonna create a new folder in there. And I'm just gonna call it, you can call it whatever you want. I'm gonna call it my start map. Um, Cause that is the map I plan to start on. Okay, so we've got our basic file structure. So again, from the Lancaster source directory, we have a hello world. Inside hello world, we have docs, images, maps, and tile sets. And inside maps, I have a start folder. So there's no files in there yet, but we have our basic folders. So the next step here is really to figure out um, maybe some of the graphics for our game. So our graphics um, will kind of determine the look of that game. You can make your own. I'm just for the, in the interest of speed, I'm just gonna grab something from the internet. Uh, and I actually found something uh, that is on um, opengameart.org. And it's this little tile set. I haven't actually used this tile set before, but it'll be an interesting uh, attempt to go through and try and use it. Uh, sorry about that. Had to uh, just do a screen check. Uh, so what we're going to do here is just download the... Um, tiles here. So tiles packed is the one we want. I'll actually put the link to this in the um, video description if you want to use it. But I'm just going to download tiles packed. I'm going to show that in folder. Uh, I'll double click it just so you see what it looks like. So this is what our tiles look like. Uh, now these happen to be very small tiles. Uh, most of these are 16 by 16 pixels. And the uh, main character here is 32 by 32 pixels, our little character. Um, there's all sorts of different sizes for tile sets and tile maps, but the main thing to know right now is this is 16 by 16 pixels. If you don't know off the top of your head, you can try through trial and error when you make your uh, tile sets, but uh, I'll show you the basics of that. So I'm gonna cut this out. So I'm gonna say cut, and I'm gonna go into my hello world directory and into my images. So I'm in Lancaster source, hello world images, and I'm gonna go paste. So now that tile set image is uh, in the directory. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this link and I'm going to go and say new file and I'm going to call this uh, hello hello world credits and uh, game design by Doug Bakewell art by and just put in some sort of link, some sort of credits file. Um, so let me save this. So save as, uh, I'm in Lancaster source, hello world. I created that docs folder, so I can actually save my credits file there. Again, not used by the game engine, uh, but certainly something that uh, you wanna keep track of. So what I've just done there is I've saved credits. If I go back uh, to File Explorer, I can see in hello world under docs, there's my credits file. And actually, I'm going to um, give that a file extension while I'm at it, just to make it easier for other people to read. That one is actually a text file, so .txt. 
Okay, so our credits are saved, that's done. Uh, we don't have to worry about anymore. Our image file is in place, that is done. We don't have to worry about that anymore. Now let's make our tile set. So we're going to go into uh, the tiled program. Uh, so if you haven't done this yet, you can actually get this from mapeditor.org, mapeditor.org, and you can say download. And the version that is um, uh, tested with Lancaster is actually version 1.7.2. So you can use a newer version, but the version from August 10th of 2021 is the version that uh, I'm using today and the version that will get used. So if you haven't done that part yet, feel free to pause the video and install Tiled. All right, so we've got Tiled running. Uh, so the next thing we need to do here is create a new tile set. So let's say new tile set. Uh, in this perspective, you can take the default, just to make sure that your tile set is 16 pixels by 16 pixels. And I'm gonna browse to my uh, file that I created. So I'm in my Lancaster folder. I'm in source, uh, hello world's my game, images, and there's my file. So I've selected my file. It's automatically going to give me uh, a name for this. I'm going to change that name. You, often you can leave that name the same, but I, I'm going to change it for a very specific reason. I'm going to call this uh, 16 by, by 16. Uh, and now I'm going to say save as. So I'm going to go back to my Lancaster folder again, and I'm going to go into source. Hello world and now tile sets. And it's gonna to default to the name uh, that I gave it. So it's 16 by 16.json. Uh, if you look at the demo game or, or many other things, uh, you'll see a better naming conventions. We're gonna do very few things with this. I'm just gonna zoom this to be nice and big so that we can see it here. Let's go say 400%. And now we can see all of our individual tiles that we've brought in. And they're all uh, very tiny. So the one problem with this is we're gonna to wanna to have a player character that is a 32 by 32 tile. Now, normally I'd recommend that when you make tile sets that all the tiles be the same size. It makes life quite easy. Um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna import this or create a new tile set based on the same image, uh, but make it 32 by 32. So I'm gonna do this again. I'm gonna say new tile set. I'm gonna pick the same image except now I'm gonna change this to be 32 by 32. I'm gonna actually change the name of my tiles to be 32 by 32. And this all makes sense in a moment. And I'm gonna save my tile set in the source Hello World tile sets as 32 by 32. Save. Uh, so the convenience, this is really a, a convenience as opposed to breaking it up, but now you can see I can use a tile like the player as a single tile. We're on the 16 by 16, that's actually four tiles. Now I can use it as a single uh, tile. Uh, a lot of these other tiles don't make sense anymore because they're too big, but if I wanna use the player, I'm only gonna use it for the player, I'll pull up that tile. Okay, so our tile sets are done. We've created our file, so you should now have, in your Hello World directory and under tile sets, you should now have two uh, files, which are 16 by 16 by J, uh, JSON and 32 by 32. And if we look at those in a text editor, because they are JSON, they are readable. So I'm just gonna open uh, in my text editor, my hello world and tile sets and have a look. And you'll, this is what they should look like inside, something along those lines. Okay. Um, normally you don't have to edit these, so don't worry too much about those. Uh, you don't have to look them in your text editor if you don't want to. Okay. So next steps. We have uh, got our graphics in order so that we can use them, but we haven't actually made a map yet. So the next step here is to make a basic map. Um, and what we're going to do for that is, is try to be quite careful because uh, there are a lot of options in Lancaster. But if we come back here to create, uh, sorry, if we come back to the Lancaster create a game link on GitHub, you'll actually see uh, some things on data creation. It'll actually tell you when you create a map, what options you need to use to get it to work with um, uh, a Lancaster. And I didn't say it for tile sets, but the save type does need to be JSON. Uh, Lancaster doesn't support any other save types. So if you did save or something besides .json, uh, please back up and, and change those to be JSON. Okay, 
so back here, so we want to do a new map now. So we're going to say new map. So our orientation is orthogonal. Our tile layer format CSV. This is the most common error is that this gets set to something else. So that's an important one to make sure that CSV. It's right down. We want it to be fixed. Uh, we're going to make it a little bigger. So let's make it, um, say, say 30 tiles by 30 tiles for size. And then the tile width, though, is quite small. They're 16 by 16. So this is going to be based on the fact that the, one of our tile sets was for the ground. So 16 by 16, 30 by 30, orthogonal CSV right down. Once you have all that, you can click Save As. Uh, now this has to go into the correct folder. So we're going to go back to the Hello World. So we're in Lancaster Source Hello World. We're going to go into Maps, and we're going to go into Start. And we're actually going to save this as start.json. You have two choices for file name. It's either matches the folder name or it's just called map.json. If you use map.json, that becomes confusing because when you have multiple maps that are all called map.json, it's, it's quite confusing. Make sure you save as type is uh, JSON and save that. And you'll end up with a nice blank map. Um, now notice I did not close my 16 by 16 or 32 by 32 um, tile sets. So they're still open. Uh, if you did close them, you're going to have to now go into map, add external tile set, and for each of them, add them in. But if you haven't closed them, you, you don't need to do that. It'll happen automatically for you. Okay, so we've got a map. It's blank. Uh, there's a blank tile layer. Uh, we're just going to ignore all that for a minute. What we're going to do first is come into this map and we're going to make our sprite layer. And that's where our player lives. So we're going to add our player. And we're going to do this on what's called an object layer. So let's go in and we're going to say new layer. It's an object layer. And we're going to call that layer sprites. And that's a very well-known name by the game engine, sprites. So we now have an object layer called sprites. I've got that layer selected. So I've clicked on it to make sure it's selected. And I want to add my player. So a couple steps here. First of all, make sure over here on the right that you're on the 32 by 32 um, tile set. And up at the top, you're going to click Insert Tile. And we're going to click the, the little red hoodie, so the character with the red hoodie. So I'm, I'm on Insert Tile, I'm on the Sprites layer, and I have the red hoodie. And I'm just going to add him to the top left of the map. And what we see over here is some properties to come up. And if you accidentally deselect him for some reason, uh, there's a selection tool here. If I hover over that, it should say select object. So if you select that, you can click the hoodie again, and it'll select it. When it's selected, you can see over here there's a type and it's empty. We want that type to be player. Okay. So we have got a object layer called sprites. On, and you can change the visibility here just to see what, what's on that layer. On that layer is a single object of type player. Beautiful. So that is done. And we're going to save that now. Um, and again, you can look at the JSON file for this as well. Um, so if we go back out to our editor, so we go into Hello World uh, game, into Maps, into the Start Map, we'll look at our start.json. And we can see uh, the beginnings of our map. Again, you don't need to look at the JSON file, but if you are interested in what's in there, you can have a look. Okay. So feel free to pause this video at any time as well. Uh, get caught up or back up and redo steps. I'm, I'll keep pushing forward. Um, so at this point, we kind of have everything we need to make a game work. We have a map, we have a tile set, and we have a player. Uh, and that's the minimum. This is the absolute minimum to get a game to work. And it's all saved. So it looks good. So I should be able to go back to my launcher now and do my first test. So let me go to, there it is. Let me go back to Lancaster. So I'm in the root folder of Lancaster and I have that run hello.bat. If I double click that now, there you go. I can now click and my little player walks around. Uh, so let's take a break here and... Um, switch back to graphics mode. So I'm going to quit this. So close all the those windows and I'm going to come back to my map. So what I have here is a is a is a layer that's a tile layer called um, tile layer 1. And what I'm going to do is is add some ground. So I'm going to do a little more uh, 
then just use that. So I'm just going to pretend that layer was there. In fact, I'm just going to garbage that layer because I'll show you how this one gets created. So I'm going to do a new layer. I want it to be called a tile layer and I want it called ground. Now, because it's the ground, I want it to be under the sprite. So it's underneath the player when it gets rendered. So now that I have that ground layer selected, I'm actually going to go back to the 16 by 16 tile set. And now I can start picking tiles and just start painting them on just like this. And then I can pick uh, a little edge of grass, I think, that might go like that, the edge of my water, so on and so forth. I can put down um, some dirt path. Maybe I'll create, say, a big path kind of coming to where I want him to go eventually down here. And we can continue doing this um, until we have uh, some nice graphics done. So I'm actually going to pause the video on my side. You can play with this and do some painting and do some drawing. And when you're happy, come back to the video. Okay, so I have just colored in my map a little bit. Um, if you remember from our original design, we're going to have some sort of path that the player can walk down and a special little square that the player can stand in at the end um, to... Uh, to um, have the Hello World pop up. Uh, and all of this is on this tile layer, this ground tile layer. So again, the sprites layer just has the player, and this is really just decoration underneath. Uh, so I've saved that, or I should save that again. So if I save that, and uh, I go back and run, run my demo again, I will see now I have a nice little map. I can walk around. Uh, nothing happens when I go on to that square yet. Um, also, I can walk on the water, and that's not great. So let's solve this walking on the water problem next. So we're going to do um, that with what we call an out of bounds layer. So what we're going to do, simply put, is we're going to add another layer here. So we're in our map again. We're going to do new object layer. It's going to be called out of bounds. It has to be spelled exactly like that, and it has to have exactly that case. So it's a camel case, so out is starts with lowercase, of starts with an uppercase O, and bound starts with an uppercase B. So make sure that layer is selected, and what I want to do is use the rectangle tool, and I just want to put rectangles where the player is not allowed to go. And you don't have to be precise about this. We're just going to put a rectangle over that hunk of water, a rectangle over that hunk of water, a rectangle over that hunk of water and a rectangle over this hunk of water. And you notice I'm not very precise, like I'm overlapping the, uh, the grass a little bit and those sorts of things, but I'm just going to save that. So I've created an out of bounds layer. If I can turn the visibility on off of those, those, um, whoops, I'm going to say undo. I just accidentally added a layer there or a, an object. Uh, so nothing selected. And if I turn the visibility of the out of bounds layer on and off, I can tell that yes, all those rectangles I added are on the out of bounds layer. And basically that just means that the player is not allowed to go there. So I'm going to save that. Go back to go back to my root directory blank tester, double click the run hello. And now my player cannot walk on water. So now he's stopped at the edge of the water. All right. So that's uh, taking care of making sure our player is only allowed to go certain places. All right, so next on our list of things here is to start with the trigger. And this is the, um, and by trigger, I mean when the player gets to that rock square that I put on the graphics, I want something to happen. So we're going to go, um, I need to actually check something here. Let me open up. I'm gonna actually go and, it's always useful to go check the uh, the demo game because it has lots of interesting things in it. Let me just go check the demo game here. Yeah, the layer actually has to be called triggers with an S. So that's a typo. So let's make sure we do that correctly. So back on our map, we're going to do new object layer, and this one's called trig gers with an S, just like that. So with triggers selected, again with the rectangle tool, we're just going to draw a rectangle generally around the rock on your map or whatever you put near the bottom of your map. It doesn't matter. You can put it anywhere. It, it has nothing at all to do with the graphics. 
Um, the graphics are just there for the player to understand what's happening. This uh, rectangle is invisible to the player, just as the out of bounds rectangle is invisible to the player. Okay, so on this uh, rectangle that we added, uh, we actually want to set its type. And we want to call it, um, say hello. Uh, so I'm just going to do that as all lowercase, say hello. Very simple. Um, now, just to confirm that that was done correctly, uh, you can go back to the selection tool, select nothing, make sure nothing's selected, click that rectangle, and it should have type say hello. Make sure it's on the trigger layer by going up to the triggers and turning the visibility on and off, and that rectangle should vanish. If I select nothing, it's easier to see. Yeah, that rectangle is vanishing and coming back. So I've made sure that that rectangle is on the triggers layer and it has type. And that's type say hello right there. Okay, so let's save our map. We're done in our map now. Our map is complete. We have nothing else we need to do. Uh, the problem that we have right now is that if we run our program uh, and we walk around and walk over that special rectangle we made, nothing happens. Uh, and in fact, we're seeing something logged here. We're seeing the server telling us that there's no method named trigger say hello. And that's what we have to fix. So let's close all. Uh, so this actually requires a little bit of code. And the what we're going to do, um, the easiest way to do this is, yeah, let me just do it this way. The easiest way to do this usually is to go into something like the demo, because we're going to subclass something called server map and just grab um, you know, some of the code here. We don't need all of it. Uh, but we definitely want to see how things get subclassed. Now, I did cheat before, so I have an idea of how to do this. So let me just say new file, and I'm going to say save as. And this file is going to go into Lancaster, source, hello world, maps. And we're going to save it into the start. Actually, you know what? It's even it's simpler. Let's do it simpler. We, we could put this file a couple places. We're going to put it in hello source, or sorry, Lancaster source, hello world. And we're going to call it server map.py. So we're going to save that. Uh, and now in this file, we need to import uh, engine.server, server. server. Uh, actually, engine.server map is what we need to import. And then we need to subclass uh, the actual. So import, import server file, and I'm just going to steal this code. So class server map. So that's what we're going to subclass, and we're going to import that from engine.servermap.servermap. .servermap. And now here the server map has a capital S and a capital M. That's the actual class name. The server map, all lowercase, is the module, and engine is the package that it's in. So this is uh, the beginning of subclassing. The next thing that we want to do is we want to write a trigger. And a trigger is what happens when the user enters, uh, or the player enters that rectangle that we created. So we're going to define a trigger called hello world. Actually, that is not what we called our trigger. So let me grab uh, this text, but this is not going to work. So we actually called our trigger when we did it. We called it say hello, all lowercase. Now Lancaster is going to expect that your trigger is going to start with an uppercase um, in the in the method because because the method is going to be camel case, it, it, regardless of what your uh, trigger's name. So it's going to be capital S and the rest will be lowercase. So define a trigger, say hello. Uh, it's going to take in self because it is uh, part of an object. It's going to take in a trigger object and a sprite object. We're not going to use a trigger object here. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to say self dot set sprite speech text of the sprite to hello world. And I'll just leave this up for a moment and you can pause the video and copy that into your code. Okay. So this file, uh, as it appears here, and uh, it should appear in Lancaster source, hello world, our game. 
Uh, so there's our server map.py. So server map.py, and this is what the content should be. So what will happen now, remember the last time that we ran uh, the game, uh, it was complaining that when the player entered our rectangle, right, when the player came down and entered this rectangle, that there was no method called trigger say hello. Well, now there is. We've defined in the server map uh, that there is such a trigger, and we've said what to do. We are going to have the sprite have some speech text that says hello world. All right, so let's test out our game. So if we go back here, we'll go back to our Lancaster directory and we do the run hello. Yeah, our code worked. There wasn't any bugs. It, it loaded up. Our player can walk around. Our player still can't walk on water, so our out of bounds are working. And if we come in there, the player says hello world. There you go. As long as he's in there, he will say it. And that's the basic Hello World application. Um, feel free to post questions uh, in the uh, GitHub issues and uh, enjoy the other videos. And I hope you enjoy Lancaster.